I'm going to show you how to go about making kind of that glass button look that for the last few years has just been really popular on the internet. I will admit that doing these takes just a tiny bit of time, but it is really worth it to give whatever you're adding them to just that extra pop. You can also use things like this as graphics for bullet points and presentations or to just have fun with honestly. So begin by creating a new file. Whenever I make a graphic that will be going on the internet, I don't try and even think how big it's going to end up. I usually just make it big in the first place. And my default width to begin building stuff is 1500 pixels. And this one I'm going to set at 800 pixels high. Resolution, it's for internet, so 72 pixels per inch. Internet, RGB color. Background contents, I will set to white for this one and click OK begin by creating a new layer. You pretty much hardly ever work on the background. You'll be building layers for each thing that you do. Grab your elliptical marquee tool and create a circle. So you will click, begin dragging, and then hold down shift to force that into a perfect circle and let go when it's about the size of, uh, I don't know, this-ish. Grab a color that you'd like to work with for this tutorial and then use your paint bucket to fill it or use the hotkey combination option delete which will fill your area with the color of your foreground color chip. In this example we're not going to deselect because we actually want to keep the selection on so all the color that we make stays within this selection. Um, I don't know about you but I really really don't like looking at marching ant pixels all the time. So I'm going to hide these and after looking briefly through my menus I didn't actually spot how to hide this through a menu. So I'm just going to tell you Command H or Control H on a PC. You may get a dialog box that says do you want to hide Photoshop or hide the extras. Choose extras. That selection is still there. We can see it again by pushing Command H again. So if you've turned your selection so you can't see it, then just keep in mind that selection is still there. We will leave this as our main color and create a new layer for the gradient. Grab your gradient tool, which is with the bucket tool, click on the gradient editor and create a gradient that has a dark and then a light on the other side. and You can add as many colors in the middle as you'd like. This will usually look best if you only add one color in the middle. So here's a dark blue and then this pale kind of yellowy color on the right and looking at this color it's not very rich or exciting so you can add a color in the middle and find one that's got a little bit more pop to it I guess and that will help out with that color scheme. So it should be maybe a brighter version of your dark color. Once you have your gradient, if you want to save it, you can click the New button and save that gradient and then click OK. We want to do this as a radial gradient. So up in your tool control bar, if you are on any of these other options, then click on the radiant one, which is the second one over and move your gradient clicker button tool here, your cursor down to sort of the lower third and click and drag a line out. Now this might take you a couple of tries to get it centered from side to side more or less and so that there's some dark around the edges. This is a completely opaque gradient so if you got it a little bit off you can do it again. Keep in mind that however far you drag that line is the area that that gradient will occur in and then everything beyond that will be solid color. Once you've got that made create a, another new layer and this time go to your gradient editor and choose the second one from the left on the top. This is the foreground to transparent and click OK. Change your foreground color to black by clicking on the default and then Oh, just default will put that in front. That's what this little chip is, is default. You can always set your default by hitting the letter D and using the letter X to switch between black and white. But we want black in front. 
if we click in the center and drag outwards, this should put kind of a dark circle around. By the way, if your colors are in the opposite direction of where they need to be, for example, if this happened to be in the center, black in the center, what you need to do is undo and then go to the tool control bar and click reverse and that should fix it. So what I'm doing with this one is instead of putting the circle down here, I'm going to go in the center about two thirds up and do the same thing I did with the other. Well, that's too much, so I'm just going to hit Command Z. Uh, that's pretty close. What you want to do is create a circle that's kind of dark around the edge and a little more light up in the middle. And this will make more sense in just a minute. We're going to give this a lot more richness by changing the blend mode on this layer. Now we will be getting into blend modes in another layer, so I'm not going to go in depth to this, but the blend modes is up here by opacity. If you grab that and change it to overlay, you should see your colors suddenly become quite a bit richer, and that will add that dark glow around the edge of the glass tool. Glass button. There we go. By the way, I am from Utah, so I do say button. I can't quite bring myself to say button. It sounds so weird. So I've just created another new layer, and this one will be for the highlight. We need to grab the elliptical marquee tool again and create a oval instead of a circle this time, and position it so that it is perfectly centered from left to right. And I can reposition it by holding down the spacebar. And this isn't any sort of an exact science, I'm just eyeballing this. So once it's created, then grab your gradient tool again and set your foreground color to white. So if your foreground color is black, you can hit the little double X, not double X, the little double arrows up here at the top and that'll flip white to the front. We need to have a linear gradient for this one and that's that first gradient option. And if you click outside the circle and drag down and let go somewhere just beyond half of the circle, what you should get is kind of a soft effect instead of having a full on solid gradient. Now, if you tried that and you got something like this, what you need to do is come up here to the toolbar and click your reverse button. So that should fix your your reverse issue. So again, I'm just hitting Command Z and redoing this till I get one that I like. Now here's where you notice that it's kind of hard to see what the whole effect is by just looking at this because we've got the marching ants around the edge. So this would be a good time to use that Command H hide where that selection is still there, but I can see exactly what it looks like. So if I didn't care for this one, I could hit undo and come in and do another. So that's pretty much how you put together a glass button. The essential part of a glass button is that there is a direct light source coming down from the top which creates a reflection on the top and a light bounce that's more towards the bottom which is what this is. So if you had a, a curved thing sticking out from the wall it would catch the light right here. And then the darker shadow around the outside edge. Those are the main elements of a glass button. The last one would probably be putting a drop shadow on it. Now you'll notice over here I've got several different layers. I can actually organize this a little bit better by combining them into a folder. So I'm going to grab all of my layers here and hit Command G or you can drag it down to the new folder which will put it in a group and you can name it. The last step to making this button look pretty real is to give it a drop shadow. Instead of coming in and putting a drop shadow on a specific layer, I can double click on the button folder and add a drop shadow there. And remember anytime you add a drop shadow, it's usually a good idea to adjust the settings. Particularly in this case because the angle indicates where the light is coming from. So the light in our drop shadow is coming from this top left angle, but the light on our 
button looks like it's coming from straight down so I should probably move that to match and that is a 90 degree angle. I'm going to reduce the opacity and increase the size which will make this a softer more realistic looking shadow and then click OK. That's our glass button there I tried to say it um, and you can do a lot of different things with this you can put other graphics on top words you can save it for the internet by hiding the background and saving it down or resizing it if you want to see what it looks like really small you can simply duplicate your folder here by dragging it down to the new icon and then right click on it and choose merge group which will create everything is just a layer. I'm going to hit command T and then hold down shift and option which will not only bring it in proportionally but it'll bring it in from all sides so I can see what this looks like small. And there it is small. The next little bit is to add a graphic on top of this so I'm going to pop out to the World Wide Web and take a look for the power I'm thinking the power button symbol and images. This is one of those universal everybody uses it things so I am not concerned with giving credit on one of these so I'm just going to grab one that looks okay and click view image, copy and paste back here in my Photoshop document. Now you'll notice that this is a flat graphic and it is hiding everything as I move it around. What I want to do is select the area that is going to become the graphic for here and then you'll see what we do with it. So in this case it's really similar colors so I'm going to grab the magic wand tool make sure my tolerance is at least at 32 maybe a little bit above and then click over here in my area that I want to use that shape and now I'm holding down shift and clicking a couple times because there's a little bit of a gradient and I want to get all of that in there so now I have a selection made I am done with this layer I don't need it anymore I'm gonna turn it off now this is something that I do all the time is bringing an image to use essentially like a template to create a selection from. So I use the image to make a selection and then I hide the layer and create a new layer that I'm going to fill with the color. So in this case I'm going to grab a really light blue and go to edit fill. It's going to use the foreground color or you can use option delete. Let's deselect command D and now I have a shape that I can do whatever I want with so I'm going to do my thing by transforming this and then if you feel like making it look really cool you can come in and add more layer styles to it you could even do something like reduce the opacity which will let a little bit of the background show through and I think that kind of helps with the glass appearance and you could do something as well like giving it its own gradient which is a layer style so I double clicked to bring up my layer style and clicked gradient overlay and then I will adjust my gradient so that it looks good so I've clicked on my little color there and I'm just clicking around in the blues in my jewel to see if anything looks great and maybe a drop shadow. Cool, huh? I like it. I'm going to add this to my folder down here by clicking and dragging it into the folder at the top so it stays above everything. And that's how you create a glass jewel or button in Photoshop.